Good afternoon. I'm John Hart, the co-founder of C3 Solutions, the Conservative Coalition for Climate Solutions, and I'm the editor of our news magazine, C3. Welcome to another edition of Tech Voices. Today, we're honored to be joined by Jacques baudry lesic the CEO of Ingenuity Power Systems, where he's helped pioneer a very exciting home private generation appliance called the E1 that, that we're going to hear more about. And uh, Jacques is a graduate of MIT and the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Renewable Energy at the Department of Energy under Presidents Bush and Obama. Jock, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, very nice to meet you, John, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. So, and thanks for all the good work you're doing on uh, behalf of Climate Solutions at C3. You bet. Well, we're, do we're doing our best. Thank you for the work you're doing in the private sector. So, so maybe th th give us some context and, and maybe describe kind of some of your journey and how you got into this field and this arena. And and I understand, you know, our, our co-founder, Drew Bond, as well. Maybe you could talk about, about your friendship with him. Yeah, I've known Drew for like a decade and a half. Uh, we go back to uh, my uh, DOE days uh, under Bush and Obama, like you mentioned. So uh, we were part of a team that was really pioneering, bringing in, uh, you know, biofuels and new renewable energy technology to the surface. And removing the barriers, deployment of these technology, enabling market transformation. So I think in a way we were part of the initial wave that's bringing the explosion in renewables we see today. So it was really a privilege to work uh, these days in, the, in the Washington. And, and you went to MIT as well. What did you, what did you study at MIT? Exactly. So, I mean, I've done a, uh, you know, my background is in engineering, chemical, industrial engineering. I did my MBA at the Sloan School at MIT. It was a technology uh, oriented school, uh, even though it was management, but it really played to the, my geeky side quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, ever since in MIT, I've been in the uh, traditional energy and uh, you know, gradually making my transition to clean tech about 15, 20 years ago. Okay. And how did you, and how did you get to where you are today with ingenuity from, from departing, I guess it would have been the Obama administration. So you yeah. were the Bush, and then you, and then they they kept you. Yeah, after the after my work in government, I worked for two clean tech uh, startup in the bio uh, biofuels and enzymatic space. Uh, both absolutely great technologies. Ultimately, these platform ended up migrating away uh, from the energy space, which was my uh, my first love. So in 2019. Uh, when a board member of Ingenuity invited me to help uh, lead that startup, uh, I jumped in the opportunity. So at the time, Ingenuity was looking for an experienced CEO with a background in both technology, startup, energy, government affairs. You know, one of these deals was I was checking all the boxes at the right time. That's great. Well, yeah, tell us more uh, more about Ingenuity. What is what what is uh, the focus of your of your company? And ingenuity is really like uh, a typical American story of three entrepreneur in a garage that invite a better mouse trap and try to find a way to commercialize it. So literally, I arrived at uh, the company in 2019. They were the three founders that created that incredibly highly efficient, compact, uh, opposed piston, four-stroke engine technology that's 40% more efficient than the engine of a similar size and class. So with the correlated, you know, lower level of emission, uh, more compact, less use of fuel, cheaper to operate, and also a lot of characteristic of that platform that makes it a very highly uh, durable platform uh, as well. So, uh, which created a lot of inter interest in application of that engine for uh, home usage and also for the military and defense market, for example. And, and you said how many, you said a four stroke engine? Yeah, it's a post-piston four-stroke engine. Yeah, and uh, and describe and just just to give context, just give examples of what a two-stroke engine would be versus four-stroke, and so people can just, have. It's just about the timing of the engine. I mean, it's a single-cylinder engine. What's a I think a bit more important characteristic is it's a post-piston. So by having it a post-piston, you can remove the essentially the head of the engine. So we call it kind of our headless engine. Mm -hmm. We're removing a lot of materials and the four strokes allow uh, allow it to be surrounded by a, by a, a very nice jacket that promotes a very smooth heat transfer so you waste a lot less energy uh, to the ambient air so that's why it's a extremely efficient way of doing things 
uh, two-stroke engine existed for a very long time, but we were the first to uh, we kind of stumble into a better solution by experimenting all kinds of ways. And that's what essentially the founders came up with that four-stroke technology. And um, some of these characteristics, like I say, high efficiency, low vibration, high durability made it ideal for a in-home application. In fact, in 2017, when these guys were doing a road show to uh, the national lab, I believe is some of the uh, annual experts at the time recommended that they go into the uh, micro combined heat and power usage for inside the home because it's so incredibly quiet and efficient. And um, in a micro combined heat and power configuration, in fact, it's over 90% uh, energy efficient, so which make it very environmentally friendly. And also it's very friendly to your wallet as well, which is uh, what we try to do. We try to be, uh, to do, you know, we try to develop green technologies that don't cost the user more money to implement like most of green technology so far. So. Right. So, uh, so how does the engine compare to like a chainsaw engine versus a car engine? Where does it fit in that, in that spectrum of, uh, the engine can be scaled at any size. Right now, it's about uh, it's, it, but uh, I would say it's it's in between. We have two versions. One can make eight kilowatt of electricity. The other one can be twenty kilowatt in electricity. If it translates in horsepower, it's around thirty or th between thirteen and thirty horsepowers for the two platform we developed. But literally, it's uh, almost infinitely scalable to about uh, one megawatt. So there's a lot lot larger application that are also will be. Uh, enabled by, by our technology. So um, we believe there's a great market niche uh, inside the home. There's tens of millions of homes in the US who can benefit from uh, that micro combined heat and uh, power technology, which is essentially recovering all the heat from the engine and produce the power on demand or as a backup unit for the home. So you're, you're, you never experience outages, you're able to save money and you can reduce your carbon footprint at the same time. Yeah, and, and so describe you're describing. I think the the E1 is that's correct. One of your flagship products. So describe in more detail what what is the what, what's the E1 for someone who's never heard of engineering? Yeah, I mean, it basically think about an appliance that makes electricity, uh, you know, two or three times more efficiency than the grid. So, in the course of creating the home's power, the E1 also provide the heat and hot water for the home essentially for free. So. Since like two requirements for a comfortable home as heat or heat and power, we replace three appliances. So your backup generator, your furnace, and your water heater. And in some cases, grid power when it's more cost effective for you to make your own power. So it makes the homeowner very comfortable, autonomous, and at, uh, at much less at risk of uh, costly outages. I mean, just last week, some of my friends in Michigan have lost power from for a week because of that ice storm that hit uh, Detroit last week. And uh, they're still literally like having to go pick up buckets of water to the lake and things like that. So that's situations like that is what our E1 is trying to really avoid. Okay. And and, and so how and how large is the system? And and folks can go to your website and look, there's a video that describes it in great detail, but, but it looks like a big hot, hot water heater essentially. Yeah. Think about a tall, a slightly taller water heater, right? Uh, it has literally the, the enclosed uh, power device is on top. The uh, water storage device has been optimized by our partners stand at the bottom, but you know, it, it looks and feels like, a, I would say a high technology water heater. If you've seen some of the water heater integrated with heat pumps, I would say that's the closest image you can have. So. It's very easy, and, and it's been designed that way to be a very tight integrated package. So it's very easy to install. It only has about five connections, uh, mm -hmm. hot water, you know, cold water, your gas intake, exhaust line, and uh, electrical, electrical connection to an electrical panel. Mm -hmm. so, so the input, the energy input is what exactly? What, what powers the system, the E1? It's essentially all kind of fuels. The two initial fuels that it's optimized on are uh, natural gas and uh, propane, but it can run on, uh, you know, low carbon biofuels as well, uh, renewable uh, natural gas, biogas, uh, landfill gas, can run on blend of hydrogen and uh, natural gas. And ultimately, it'll be designed to run on hydrogen as well uh, mm -hmm. once we have cost-effective supply that's available uh, at larger scale. 
That's fascinating. So, so le- it's it's good timing that you're talking to me because I have a an interesting energy challenge, and I think is somewhat representative of, of people. I've got, I, I have an eighteen twenty house that's right right across the the field from me, and we have an old furnace and thick walls, not great insulation though, because of the construction back then. So, so what, if I were to do this, for example, I would, I would replace my old, my oil furnace with this and my hot water heater. And that's the same with people of, of, with that same configuration, which is fairly common, particularly in the Northeast. Yeah. You can replace your furnace and your water heater at the same time. And, uh, if you have, uh, natural gas hookup, we can run it on natural gas. If you don't, we would likely run it on the propane as well, which is also a very uh, clean fuel as well, and also very popular in the Northeast. And and what what is the the average cost savings? Like let, let's just for example, let's let's say I spend a thousand dollars a month on heating, and it, it, let's say that includes the cost of hot water, just theoretically. Yeah, I mean, if you spend a thousand dollar a month, depending on the size, but I would say our rule of thumb is if you have a 3,000 uh, square foot home, you can save you about 100 to $200 per month, depending on where in the country. Uh, but if you spend a thousand a month in electricity or, or in utility costs, uh, we bet we could save you uh, at least 20 or 30% of that. And uh, we have actually modeled about the savings of our unit in every single zip code in the US. So if you send me your zip code and your characteristic, I can actually tell you how much money you'd save with our unit. So is that is that feature on your website? So can people go to the website and look it up, or do they have to send an email? No, I mean we're, we're considering uh, creating a very small uh, smart device, a uh, small interface for customers to do that. Right now, it's a fairly complicated model that that we kind of run in a in a case by case basis. I think we have some use cases on our web website. That's all, all we have today, but uh, we we'll definitely consider doing that. That's good. Well, well, tell me how has the company over the past year. I mean, describe how you've grown some of the challenges you're, you're facing and and where you hope to be a, maybe a year from now, but also longer into the future. You talked about hydrogen as well. There's a lot happening that would be really interesting to get your perspective on where things are now, where they've been in the past year, but also where you see your company headed and how this fits an important need in the market. Yeah, and then let me talk to you maybe a little bit about our second leg. So we have two major legs, commercial and military. We've also been very successful in the military being able to uh, raise about $21 million funding to uh, BOD product development contracts. The Army has been very supportive. They're also supportive of helping us deploy our technology for civilian markets as well. So they've been an absolute ideal partner for us. I can't tell how good they've been in with us. So. For them, we're tra- trying to build a portable hybrid generator. So they're trying to replace three family of generators, two kilowatt, three kilowatt, and five kilowatt, which use different models, brand and technology to a single platform, two to five kilowatt, follow the load. That's uh, only half the weight of their current five kilowatt system. And uh, with all the latest, you know, electronics technology, uh, you know, advanced diagnostic technologies and uh, and, and, and that would really help them uh, basically reduce the amount of unit they have to bring in the field, in the field reduce maintenance costs, reduce uh, the cost of fuel, but also we are lowering the heat and noise signature uh, from these units as well, which has some operational benefits. And uh, you know that, that market alone um, could be in the thousands of, uh, of units. And the beauty is that we are, using our same opposed piston engine technology, except we're uh, making it run a compression ignition, uh, JP-8 fuel uh, for the military. So it's just a version that runs on JP-8. And, um, and there are some very cousin technology that run in gasoline, for example, that could be a portable hydro generator to your uh, local construction contractors, for example, right? Uh, most of these contractors go to their generator in just a few months, but because of the durability feature of our system, I think we have a system can actually last for years, be a lot more quiet. So allowing contractor to start, for example, using the system much earlier in the morning because HOA have kind of noise regulations and, and those right. current systems are so noisy. You don't want anybody at 7 a.m. in our in your neighborhood. <laughs> well, our, our system could run. And, uh, but that's, that's, that's the... I'm sorry. What fuel does that do? Do the 
contractor grade generators? Contractor would likely be mostly uh, on gasoline. Okay. Then there's another cousin market is for disaster recovery. That one would run on diesel fuel, which is pretty close to the JP8 system we're developing for the military. And of course, there's a whole commercial market, which is much larger for our E1 unit, which is the micro combined heat and power unit, which is uh, literally tens of millions of potential uh, sales in the United States and, uh, you know, tens to hundreds of billions of uh, dollars of, of revenue potential annually in the U.S. And, and worldwide. So that's really literally is our long term play. Uh, but we we really value quite a bit also our our military uh, military market and stool because it's uh, uh, it's uh, definitely a reliable market with a built-in customer that can also uh, benefit our um, commercial product development as well. Okay, well that's that's fascinating. So what what else should should people know about about ingenuity that that I haven't touched on? Anything else coming up on the horizon? Yeah, I would say. I mean, if you think about it, um, uh, the grid is uh, you know becoming more and more uh, taxed by these uh, you know no new renewable projects that hook to the grid every year. Uh, it will need to grow quite a bit over the next decades to meet that uh, influx of uh, additional capacity, especially as the world is moving toward more. EVs and uh, and because uh, it it is relatively antiquated and there's a lot of pressure on our grid and also because of problem caused by climate change we're experiencing more and more outages so uh, I can't tell you how much uh, you know demand or inquiries we receive every time there's an outage in any region across the country so I think we are positioning ourselves to really being a really backup system. Uh, for the grid itself, uh, if you think about our our E1 units, it will uh, it will run just a few hours a day, so it will have a tremendous amount of extra capacity that can be used to supplement the grid when the grid is short. So basically, increasing the reliability of the grid. So we really see ourselves to uh, as a tool to not only improve the uh, life of the homeowner, but also improve the life of the transmission system operators and grid operators by being able to have being that source of reliable extra capacity that can be used at that time and help meet the energy needs of the U.S. in, in coming decades. So uh, definitely a lot of exciting possibilities. So I would say the next thing coming from us is really putting, I think mean, once we have these hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands units in is like really uh, moving to having, you know, micro grid configurations and moving into overall uh, network resiliency. And we believe there's tremendous uh, market upside there. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. That's, that's a challenge in the area where I live. Uh, over, the, over Christmas, there was a severe, you know, cold snap really across a lot of the country. We had major power outages and sure would have been nice to have uh, a system that would have powered my furnace and our hot water all at the same, all at the same time. Yeah, a lot of my friends that had electrical heat pumps had to move toward uh, my friends that had actually backup generators or more traditional appliance. But if people had a new one, they would have never lost power. Well, Jack, where can people go to learn more about, about the E1 and your other products? Uh, we have an excellent website. I encourage everybody to go to our website at ingenuitypowersystems.com. It's uh, updated uh, regularly. We also have... Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn uh, social media sites as well that people can find information about our company. Well, good. Well, Jack, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us again. I'm John Hart. This has been Tech Voices with C3 Solutions. You can follow us and learn more about uh, Jack's company and other exciting companies who are pioneering energy innovation at c3newsmag.com.